Hi guys, welcome to another project, fun-filled project here today with your community artist, Bethany Bennett from Atlantic Center for the Arts. Today we are going to be building our very own spider web using yarn, tape, and scissors. And that's basically it. I'm using a wooden board um, just because we were thinking about doing it on a wall, but I figured this way I could just take it with me. And since I've got this beautiful yarn here, I'm going to show you how to make your own spider web. Um, so spider webs, which are really common in nature, are really fun to make and they don't have to just be associated with Halloween. Um, in an earlier series we made our very own dream catchers and dream catchers are actually based upon um, spider webs found in nature. So this is just another fun project we're going to learn how to do and you guys can use this in the future instead of going to party time and paying for your own spider web, I'm going to teach you how to make one. And you can also, um, if you don't have yarn, you can go ahead and use just dental floss or string or whatever you have that's accessible. Um, we're going to start by cutting about 10 pieces of yarn that are all about 36 inches. They don't have to be that long, but depending on how big you want your spider web to be, um, you can go super massive or you can keep it rather small. Since I'm working on this piece of birch wood, um, it's going to be kind of a smaller spider web. But, and I'm hoping we get into some of the blue and purples and greens in here. So, spider webs are super rad. Um, they actually are an example of the Fibonacci sequence that, that's found in nature. And um, the Fibonacci sequence, also referred to as the golden ratio, is found in many things in nature, um, like seashells, ocean waves, different flowers. So it's also uh, known as the golden spiral. And these are ratios that people have found that actually add up with each other. And um, artists like MC Escher and Leonardo da Vinci used the Fibonacci sequence in their art to make great compositions. So the Fibonacci sequence is actually mathematically or numerically um, 1 plus 1 equals 2, 2 plus 1 equals 3, 3 plus 2 equals 5. So whatever number is before it, you add it and that's how you get the second number. So 8 plus 5 is 13, 13 plus 8 is 21, and it goes on and on and on. And these mathematical equations can be found in nature, which is really cool. So what I'm going to do is tape it around the back of the board. And if you're doing this on a wall, you can just do it like that. 
just tape it directly to the wall. Or you can do it on a door. I like to use a, one or two pieces of tape just to secure it. So you're just going to go across in diagonals. The only thing I want to emphasize is that um, when you go across and make your second diagonal or your third or fourth, you go ahead and secure it in the middle. So you bring it around. Trim as you go. I'm really wishing I had some blue or purple coming up. Here we go. So same thing, make sure you secure it in the middle. before you attach it to opposite sides. So this piece of wood, I actually marbled. And that's just transferring ink that I had um, marbled in a bathtub onto a piece of wood, which is a really fun technique. It's a way to transfer images. So I've got eight pe or I've got four pieces of string creating one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight different sections. And you can do as many as you want. But I am probably going to do hmm one or two more. I think one or two more would suffice. You can go ahead and do as many as you please. Starting to get into that blue. I want blue and greens. This is such a cool swirl of yarn. I love it. Okay. Some of my favorite colors. We are our own little spiders today. 
creating our webs. So there we have the beginning of our beautiful spider web. So what you're going to do to begin your spider web um, is start by tying, you want to get at least about three yards of yarn and tie that on real tight. This is gonna be a separate piece of about three yards of yarn. And you're gonna kind of crumple it up in your hand so that it's not hard to um, move it underneath the existing yarn. So, you're gonna start by going around. So you wrap it around there. You wanna make sure you go underneath. The next sectional string. So every time you go to uh, wrap it through, make sure you go underneath and wrap it all the way around so that it's holding itself in place. So see, you can start to see the beginning of the spiral. And it gets bigger as you go along. You can make it tightly knitted if you prefer, or you can make it a little bit loose. So all I'm doing is just going around, wrapping underneath the next section. You can decide how big the different spaces are. Or say you wanna make it super unique and do different um, shapes or triangles. Doesn't always have to be uh, these perfect shapes in between each section. All spider webs are unique. It's like their personal artwork that they make. Or it's like when we build a home and we design it ourselves, all the decisions that go into it. So you can see the spiral starting to form and 
depending on which side you bring the yarn to, um, it, it will either go in or out. So be conscious of that as you're working. And if you decide to make your sections smaller, um, just be sure you uh, secure the yarn pretty tight. You don't want it to be super loose. So all the colors together look really awesome with this yarn. And if you do run out of yarn, which it tends to happen just depending on how large or massive you're going with this spider web, you can always just tie a little knot on and um, add another piece of string. It is not a big deal if that happens. See how I'm kind of straightening things out to make the shape more consistent? That's because I'm a perfectionist, but honestly, spiders don't do that. They have all different kinds of shapes and cool different kinds of webs that they build. And imperfections, I think, are what make things perfect. So you can wait until Halloween to make your first spider web, or you can go ahead and practice right now and share it with me at our STEAM theme gallery, which is um, online with ACA. And the link uh, is in the description below this video. And I'd love to see what kind of spider webs you guys create. Um, totally keeping this. So there we combined math and science and we combined art and we had a blast and we made a really cool spider web. A beautiful example of the Fibonacci sequence. Once you complete your spider web, you can go ahead and just tie it off wherever you see fit. You can take it like that at an angle, or you can take it off to the side. I usually like to kind of end it with a nice little triangle like that. And then I just snip. And there you have it. Homemade spider web. Thanks for joining us with our STEAM theme projects. Hope you'll join us next time. Remember to take a picture of your spider web and uh, exhibit it online at our STEAM theme gallery. The link is in the description below. And join us next time. See you soon, guys.